You're looking mighty Robin's egg blue. All right, so please save all of your notes section. We're going to skip 5-2 because 5, not really skip it, we'll probably go back and do some problems in it, but it's more identity stuff. So we are right now on 5-3. Yeah. Is that how tall you are? 5-2? Come on. 5-4, thank you very much. Oh. Are we doing 5-4 or are we going to skip that? We are not doing 5-4. <laughs> we are doing this doesn't matter. Especially not now. Uh, we are going to work on solving trig functions. And like I said, you need to have your orange tables out because those are going to be very, very handy. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say? Are you recording already? Yeah. Oh. No, you didn't even say shuffle yet, did you? No, but I made a height joke. <laughs> so it's okay. All right, first example, 2, the sine of x minus 1 equals 0. And your job is to solve for x. So what I want you to do is compare this to if it was just 2x minus 1 equals 0. If it was just 2x minus 1 equals 0, what would you do? You'd add 1. 2x is equal to 1, and then you have to divide both sides by 2, so x would be equal to 1 half. Right? But it doesn't say 2x minus or 2x minus 1 equals 0. It says 2 to the sine of x. So we have to solve it the same way. So you're going to add 1 to each side. So you're going to have 2 the sine of x is equal to 1. Then you divide each side by 2, so x, the sine of x, is equal to a half. So you've solved it as much as you can now. Your job now is to figure out what value of x will make the sine of x equal to 1 half. And that's why I said have your orange tables out, because if you go to your orange tables, you go to the sine row on your table, and you search for 1 half. Yes. 30. It's 30. Or I wanted one radians. Let's do radians. Pi over, over 6. Pi over 6. Yeah. So when x is equal half. to pi over 6, you're going to get a half, right? Where else does it happen? Uh, pi over 6. It also happens at 5 pi over 6. Very nice. All right. So we have two answers. We have pi over 6 and we have 5 pi over 6. Are you okay with what I just did? Um, I also want you to know that that is, those are the values of x in one rotation around the circle. But I could go around again. Would you agree? Yes, ma'am. And you could have a half again, you could have it again, you could have it again, again, and again. So, just remember that pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 are only the answers if you are flipping around the circle one time. Well, those same one. answers happen when you go around again, and again, and again. So if I continuously added... 2 pi on to pi or to, to pi over 6, I would have another answer. Do you understand why I'm adding 2 pi? Yes. yes. So here's a circle. Um, this right here is pi over 6. If I went all the way around the circle again and went back here, there would be another answer at that same spot. So if I kept adding one rotation, in other words, 2 pi onto it, I'd have more answers. But we will just talk about the answers one flip around the circle. Do you have a question? Why can't you just inverse sign it? Because everyone that comes with it will have to. Yeah, you can do that too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but some of them are going to be. Um, <laughs> yes, that that is going to work. Now, but you, but that, when you did that, what did it tell you? It told you thirty, and then you missed this one because the calculator is only going to give you that one. So yeah. So to keep that in mind, that you can get some answers, you're not going to get them all. And then when they when we start doing things like. Um, like if you have a secant in there, then it just gets a little trickier typing things into the calculator. All right, let's try another example. Um, the sine of x plus the square root of 2 is equal to the negative sine of x. We have to figure out what x is. So that would be like this. 
you've got x plus the square root of 2 equals negative x. What would you do first to figure out what x is? Add the square or subtract the square root. Yeah, you would probably move the square root of 2 over to the other side. But you also need, you would need to move that negative x over to the left-hand side. You'd want to get the x's together. So you would add this to the other side, so you'd have 2x plus the square root of 2 is equal to 0. And then you would subtract the square root of 2 to get that to the other side, so 2x would be equal to the negative square root of 2. And then you would divide by 2. Are you okay with that? So we're going to do exactly the same thing, just using signs. So I am going to take this negative sign of x, and I'm going to move it over here so that my sine of x are together. So I add the sine of x, and I add the sine of x over here. So I have two sines of x plus the square root of 2 is equal to 0. And if you guys can combine these first couple of steps into two, into one step, I, I'm fine with that. If you guys can um, move the square root of 2 over, to the right hand side and move the negative sine of x to the left hand side in one step, and then by all means do that. Okay? And the square back the square root of 2 now. So I have 2, the sine of x is equal to the negative square root of 2. I divide by 2. So I have the sine of x is equal to the negative square root of 2 divided by 2. Your job, what's your name? Your job is to figure out where do we get negative square root of 2 over 2. 5 pi over 4. What's the matter, Jacob? Are you mad that you didn't get to answer that? I did. What about 3 pi over 4? 3 pi over 4, I don't think that happens there. 7 pi. 7 pi. I have 5 pi over 4. Now, be careful, because I did notice that some of you, remember you guys filled out your own orange tables? Mine's right. Some of you, I noticed, had a, a few wrong answers. So in, if you are concerned or wondering if your answers might be wrong, you may have forgotten a negative or something, I do have the answer key up here if you want to come up here later and, and peek to make sure that you have them all right. You are certainly welcome to do that. So what did we come up with, you guys? Um, 5 pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4. Those are the two values of x that make the sine value negative square root of 2 over 2. Wait, 7 pi over 4 is probably like the cube or something. All right. Another example. Can I flip the screen? No. no. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lewis was being serious. Oh. Here. He was actually being serious. I didn't, I didn't even hear what he said. What he did said you say? no. Oh. Are you good now? So we have 3, the tangent, the squared of x minus, so I, what if it was this, what if it was 3x squared minus 1 equals 0, what would you do first? Plus 1. And 1. So we have 3x squared equals 1, and you would divide by 3. Divide by 3. So x squared is 1 third, what's the extra stuff you need to do? Square root. Square root it. So you take the square root of each side. The square root of x squared is x. What is the square root of 1? One. 1. The bottom, though, doesn't have a chance. You've got to leave it like that. What's wrong with that? Uh, the You have to rationalize the denominator. Did you hear that? To rationalize the denominator. So you multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. So what's 1 times the square root of 3? Square root of 3. And then what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? So we have the square root of 3 over 3. All right. I'm going to go back to this. I think once you've seen it this way, this part comes pretty naturally. So and, and do you have to do this um, basic algebra steps over here on the right every time? No. I'm just showing you how I'm getting this stuff, okay? You know what, you guys? I, 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 I screwed up here. What did I forget? And I took the square root of one third. What did I forget? What's the square root of four? Oh, plus or minus. Positive and negative. So I gotta, I gotta do that. It should be positive 
and negative square root of 3 over 3. So I'm going to add 1 over here. So I have 3 tan squared of x is equal to 1. I divide both sides by 3. So we have the tangent squared of x is equal to 1. I end up with the tan of x is equal to positive and negative 1 over the square root of 3. But when I rationalize the denominator, I have to multiply both sides, or excuse me, not both sides, the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. So I end up with the tangent of x is equal to positive and negative square root of 3 over 3. You guys have already seen the math for that anyway, so I know I spoke very quickly. So look at your tables and figure out where is it that the tan value is either a positive or a negative square root of 3. Yes, instead of two answers, you're going to have four answers. Pi over 6, yes. 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Okay, so we have pi over 6. Yeah. We have 5 pi over 6. We have 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. Did I say 7 pi over 6 twice? No. I did say 5, okay. And then we have 11 pi. All the 6s, all the denominators of 6s. This is not horrible, is it? It's nice in comparison to the identities you've been working on. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's just do a. Let's do a few. I'm gonna pick and choose which ones we're gonna. Which ones we're gonna do? Um, I have a whole bunch of examples here. I don't think we need to do them all. So let's try this one. We have the secant of x minus two equals zero. I am not gonna do the algebra steps on the right hand side because this is pretty much a one, a one stepper. Well, this one's hard. Yes. And two. JK. So we have the secant of x is equal to two. Look at your tables. You're looking for two. Where is it? Two answers, right? Pi over three and. Probably. Um, oh, I hate the word always. Probably. Yes. Is it highly probable? The highly probable, the time, yes. They will have like the that. same denominator. All right. Let's do, um, I'm going to try this. I'm going to start a new page. All right, new example. We are looking for the sine squared of x is equal to 3 the cosine squared of x. How many are you there? Quit. Subtract Quit. 3. Right. Subtract 3. Do the 3 is not being added on to anything. Wait, never mind. Divide by cosine. Why, yeah. why should I divide by cosine? It'll make it tangent. It'll make it tangent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I divide both sides by the cosine squared. Is that sine squared supposed to be an X or is that a little yes. V with a mustache? <laughs> I, I, I missed you yesterday, Michael. I know. I was right. sleeping. What is the sine squared divided by the cosine squared? Tan squared. Yep. So we have tan squared of X equals 3. What do I do now? Square root it? The reason we're square rooting is because our tables don't tell us the tan squared, they tell us the tell us the tan. What's the square root of tan squared? And so what do we have here? Positive and square root. Never square root. Now, um <laughs> I bet I will. Do I need to do any rationalizing here? No, no. Yeah, only do that if it's on the it's in the denominator. How many answers do you get? Four. Three. Four. Unfortunately. <laughs> what are they? You should get four. Four, yeah. You should get four, yeah. What are they? Bumps.
This is that one page. No, we're going to do one more. Of, well, it's that one page of notes. It's perfect. One page of notes. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Is I want to make sure that I... I need to be able to read it. The hardest one will obviously... The ink bleeds. The bleeds. Okay. I'm going to spot my one. All right, let's try this one. Wait. This one's a little oh trickier. What is the matter? Nothing. <laughs> Not a right joking now. matter. <laughs> so they are not me. Um, all right. Um, this is a little trickier one. I want. I'm going to talk about this one in terms of x squared. So what if we have an x squared minus x equals two? What would you do there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. So now we have the secant of x 
um, plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 from each side. So we have the secant of x is equal to negative 1. So what value of x makes the secant equal to zero negative and 1? Two, five, five. Happens at where and where? Wasting paper. Uh, all right, bye.